What's going on guys? It's your boy Sasa here with a video here today. We're guys a Photoshop tutorial and a create your very own cool kind of like the 2020 uh, thumbnail period. Got, that's all I got. Um, so basically I'm just gonna try to like go over some really cool simple things of uh, what makes a good thumbnail, what you can do to improve yours, and get the really cool text effect that I got going on here as well. And then just overall finalization things that just kind of makes it look really complete, nice and good, all good to go, and set yourselves up for some really good content thumbnails uh, coming up for this year. So without further ado, it's not too much to talk about. Let's just go ahead and move into it and hope you guys do enjoy it. As always guys, 275 likes on the video. It goes a secret down below, which will simply be the PSD that you guys see here right now today. And uh, yeah, I finally... <laughs> Got a, I got a haircut, bro. And also, for some reason, my voice is gone. Not for some reason. Went too hard last night. Um. Anyway, so yeah, I'll tell you guys in a second. Let's get this thing going. All right, guys. So the first order of business is to make sure that your picture itself is catching the right eyes, right? When you're scrolling through about 40 different videos a day, you want to make sure that your picture is as vibrant as possible because obviously, that's how you get people's eyes on your actual thumbnail. So we're going to go ahead, of course, and make sure our picture is nice and put place in the, in the spot we want. Something around here is pretty good for myself, but as you can see, the picture itself is fairly dull in comparison to something like this, where the actual picture in the background is not as dull at all, and we can just make it look way, way better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure I right click, convert it to a smart object firstly, right? That'll make sure when I actually use my filter, camera raw filter, I can actually go back into it very simply and easily if I wanna fix and change some things. So. This little Y button down here switches between before and after. Of course, we're going to go ahead and click that. I'm going to make sure I stretch this out for you guys. You can see both of them fairly clearly. So on the right-hand side is the after. So we're going to be looking at the most. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my exposure, throw this up pretty much like about one, almost like a plus 1% or so, which is basically like a very, very high amount. What I'm going to do, though, is going to counteract that by using the shadows and blacks and throwing these down actually as well. That'll give us more of the depth back in the actual uh, picture. Right, so I have this. You're gonna see that the, the brightness is already happening, right? So I'm gonna take some clarity. I'm gonna put this about 15 or so. This is my go to. Uh, of course, I'm also gonna put in some sharpen, uh, just like so. I'm gonna put maybe like 10 or so. Now, when it comes to sharpen, if you guys are ever in the scenario of using like a picture that's really, really low quality, actually, wait. Right, so what I was gonna say is so you guys have a picture like this, right? You have like a really cool gameplay photo, but then you, of course, you don't want your webcam in there, you want your overlay in there, you want to zoom in pretty like. In here right you can see the picture quality itself is super super low but if we were to go ahead and use a camera raw filter for a second of course this is before or after you would do your color corrections but you take your sharpness right you can say like hey this is not as sharp as i would like it to be right you want to put your sharpness pretty much all the way up right then you start seeing a lot of like noise and kind of weird uh kind of texture in the actual picture coming up so what i like to do is take my luminance noise reduction put the luminance up just like so almost towards very 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 how do you say uh smooth in a sense Take the actual luminance detail, put this all the way up as well. Take your sharpen and kind of move up slowly, but you'll see if I kind of zoom in for a second, right? You can kind of see the small difference. Maybe this isn't the best best picture because it's not um, as easy to see the differences, but I'm promising you if you guys, ah, you can see it on the leaves actually, right? So you can see the sharpening here. I make sure I put my luminance up, luminance detail up as well, and that'll give you guys a better look to your color or excuse me, your picture when you're of course zoomed in. So we can go back into our actually color overlay here, right? Cool, literally right where I left off, right? The, uh, the extra sharpening there as well. But the fourth tab, which is hue, saturation, and luminance adjustments. Basically what you wanna do, of course, is turn all, all these up basically to a good point, right? So we're gonna take the saturation, we're gonna work on the blue, which is the sky, right? We're gonna turn this up just like so, pretty much all the way up. Take the yellow, put that up a little bit. Orange, we'll put this up a little bit. Green, of course, throw this up. There's a lot of green in here. Um, and then I'll say to myself, I wanted to go to my luminance, take my blue, move this up a little bit as well to get a little more, uh, how do you say, uh, Make it look a little bit more not so, so just just like almost like throw a vibrance on it, right? So also don't be afraid to go into hue and just be like, hey, I want I want a green sky. Like why not? Uh, or you want, hey, like I want the actual beach to be red. Whatever reason, go for it, try it out, enjoy it. There's no reason not to. But lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go to my second tab, which is the curves. And I'm gonna go ahead and just take this up just like so and then move this down. Just like so, I'm gonna give us a very simple S curve, which is gonna bring up our highlights, lower down our shadows, and you'll see the difference is very, very clear. When you look from left to right, the before and after, press OK, and you're good to go. And uh, now with this, it's a little bit dark on this right-hand side. I will simply to fix that, you take your shadows, throw this up a little bit, just like so, there you go. Cool, so now that I have my picture looking really vibrant and good, we can actually move into the text, because that's pretty much the last part, or I guess not the second part, which is, of course, the text, uh, and then lastly would be the assets that you guys put in. So the first part is of course making sure your background is all good to go and vibrant. 
and let's go ahead and move on to the actual text. All right, guys, so now for the actual text portion of the video here today, we're gonna make our text look nice and cool like this because we want it to just look as good as possible, right? And it's a fun, different kind of style that I haven't done before for the text. So this will be fun and new for you guys as well. Also kind of shows a new technique as well that hopefully a lot of you guys understand, enjoy, and uh, use. So, right, I have this here. We're gonna, we're not gonna be doing this. We're not gonna just be putting the drop shadow on, calling it a day, right? As, as, as good as it might feel to you, there's a way better options and way better looking things. So we're gonna do is just take the words caught them, right? I have this in a group for some reason. Let's just take this out of a group for a second, okay? We're gonna take the first two words, caught them, right? Also, I like to, of course, stack my actual words for the thumbnail. So I also make sure if there's more characters in the second line, which trying to escape is more characters than caught them. I like to make sure I kind of have it nice and uh, uniform right under each other. So basically kind of having this uh, these sides line up, right? So I'm gonna take the words, caught them. I'm gonna make a duplicate of it, which is control J on our keyboard. And on the actual duplicate copy, we're gonna right click on this and convert it into a shape. So I'm gonna take this duplicate copy, uh, the shape layer now that it is, we're gonna drag it below the duplicated caught them, the first line of text. And we're gonna basically use the A direction tool, which is basically, or I say A direction tool, but it's A in your keyboard for the shortcut. And the direct selection tool is right here. Right, you guys will notice that if you guys are, of course, click on the words caught them, you guys will see a nice little highlight when you guys put the A direction tool in your hot bar. You also see on the top over here as well is this toolbar uh, where it has your fill and your stroke, which is basically just like Illustrator. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn off your fill, which is the first box right here. Then, of course, you're gonna turn on your stroke. I'm gonna put mine nice purple, right? Take my stroke color. We're gonna make sure we bring this up. You can't see it because, of course, it is below that layer we have firstly, and also the alignment is on the inside, and we wanna make sure you change it to put on the outside. So the third little thing right here, which is the stroke options, we're gonna make sure you take your alignment, put on the third one, the last one, which is the outside, right? Then we can go back into here and bring this up again. Um, just, oh, that looks pretty good right there. So make sure, of course, if you have dotted lines, this is because you have the option of the do uh, dotted line selected, just click on the actual first top one, and you should be good to go. So the cool thing about this is if I just hide this for a second, and if we were to go to the caught them originally on the original kind of uh, text layer, if I use stroke option, we'll just make it purple for the sake of just seeing the difference, right? Position, outside, size. You guys will notice that, of course, when you guys are using stroke options inside a text layer, they are not pointy and kind of like clean and cut uh, like how Illustrator would do if you guys were to use strokes. Photoshop always rounds them, but basically if you guys were to, just, of course, convert your text layer into, a, of course, shape, then you can get a really cool clean Things like this, where it's very nice and sharp, and you could be good. It's, it's way quicker. Um, don't know why I never thought about it, but now we know, and now you guys should know, and uh, no more pen tooling. Hell yeah. So, now that I have this, I can go ahead and uh, put in my layer style. So for the first one, we're gonna put caught them. Now, also, by the way, if you guys use, uh, when you guys do convert into a shape layer, I don't know if I said it, uh, make sure you guys understand, you have to make sure you spell it right, because you can't go back and change it. It's not like a smart object. Um, at least not that I know. So the first one here, styles. I have my style already saved, which is the first one of my little style things. By the way, when you guys end up giving, when I give you guys a style here, or if you guys have the PSD, you guys can save the layer style by just clicking on the word new style, just like so, naming it whatever you want, like how I have here, so I have to put it in every single time. So bevel and emboss, you can just copy these settings right here. 100, 2, 0, inner, smooth, 91, uh, 32, screen is basically, this color is white, this color is black. We have screen, we have multiply, black, 27, and 50. Simply just copy these stuff and you're good to go. Inner layer, uh, inner glow, 81, 0, 0, 6, 50, 1. And the color I have here for some reason is an offset pink. I don't know, maybe you can use white. It doesn't really matter too much. But if you guys want to change the same exact pink uh, or offset color, I do have the hex code right down here for you guys, right? And I will have the gradient overlay. So this gradient overlay is a very simple sort of like white, gray, white, gray sort of format. So if you guys do not know, you get the same exact nodes put in the same exact places by just like clicking on the actual bar itself right under it. You guys wanna kinda of like copy exactly where they are. And the first one is basically a nice gray, CD, 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 right? The second one is white. I believe the second one, or the third one here is also white. Uh, the one on the far right hand side uh, is another gray. And then the one on the actual farthest right hand side is white. So it's very simple. If you guys wanna get, uh, get that gradient going as well, you'll be go uh, good to go. The English is hard. Uh, and blend mode on normal, black, 63 opacity, 717, 29 size, and you guys are good to go. And once you guys have this, you press OK, right? And then this one right here for the actual uh, back plate of it, take this uh, uh, styles, boom, there we go. And now this is kind of like the same thing. We're going to run through it. I'll just leave you guys to, of course, screenshot it, pause the video if you guys need to to copy the settings. This is for beveled emboss. We have a little bit of satin on as well, which makes the actual inner portion 
almost kind of feel like a drop shot on the inside. I know we already have a drop shot on the text, but it just adds a little more element and texture in there. And gradient overlay, right? We just have a simple black to white gradient overlay with a simple blend mode being on overlay. That was weird to say for some reason. And then opacity down, <clears throat> voice crack to 26. And then drop shadow once again, just like so. Press OK. Now we have this word caught them, being of course white text, looking super, super good with a nice backplate over it. We're looking pretty good. So we're gonna do the same exact thing for the words trying to escape, but just I'm gonna speed this through because you're gonna need to see it again, right? Okay, perfect. Now you can actually see the little bevel and emboss kind of trick we have here for the highlights and shadows of this little portion right here. Looks super, super clean, super nice and good. Um, so yeah, now we have this. I like to put in a little bit of color sometimes in my text. White is perfectly fine as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of yellow in the actual word escape because I, I did that before. I like that color. We're gonna put a little bit of yellow just like so. Now the reason why you can't see it is because gradient overlay is on. So if you guys are using this layer style, make sure you guys turn off gradient overlay if you wanna put more color into it just so you guys know. Now it looks pretty good right there. Then I can go ahead and group all this together by clicking on the first layer, holding shift, click on the last layer of the text itself, right? I'll select everything in between, press control G to group it together. Then I can go ahead, make it a little more bigger if I need to, make it a little bit sideways. I'm looking pretty good there, okay. Caught them trying to escape. The last little portion I'd like to go ahead and do and show you guys is I'm gonna open this group for a second and I wanna put the words caught them in their own little group. So we have basically two groups in one, right? That's perfectly normal. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and make a new layer. We're gonna take uh, this new layer and right click and click mask this layer to that uh, new group, which is basically is the caught thems together, right? Then I can take my brush. I'll use this purple, just like so on the inside. Click in here. I can click right here, right? You don't have to do this, by the way. It doesn't really matter, but I like to go ahead and just use a hard light, just like so. Or I can just use uh, Linear Dodge. There we go, yeah, let's use Linear Dodge Add. Um, with Linear Dodge Add, with that little purple that we just chose, which is the back plate color. And uh, you kind of put a little little glow in there. You can have it look pretty cool. Um, also look pretty cool for a header kind of like text as well. So either way it works. I think this looks really, really simple and clean. And we're gonna simply move on to now finalize it, which is like the finalization with the assets and then finalizing it with like very cool little sharpening techniques just to make it look as clean as possible. So with that being said, let's go ahead and move into it. Okay, so for basically the whole little asset portion I'm talking about is when you have the words like for me, I have caught them trying to escape. I have the, uh, I just basically Googled a cool little object that would kind of help me. I could have used caution tape. I could have used like maybe like a, like a caution cone. Not really, maybe that, but caution tape, a cool stop sign like, hey, stop trying to escape kind of thing, right? So basically I just kind of typed in the word or object that I wanted, of course, then into Google and put in afterwards the PNG. So I put stop line, stop sign, PNG. I got this PNG and I can just take this PNG here. What I like to do is just kind of take it below the actual text. This group right here is my text. Take it, put it below it. Then I'll go ahead and say on the corner here, I'll put the word, or I want to make sure I at least see a little bit of the actual stop word, right? Looks pretty good. Also, by the way, uh, Windows, if you guys watch my top five uh, tips for Photoshop that you guys would never, I don't know, I'll put, I'll put, actual, I'll put a title, code over, title card over there, right? So if you guys know, right, the Navigator, which is right here on the top right, I have it, and I have it really, really small because I like to make sure that, like for me instance, this is kind of like a little bit bigger than what a YouTube thumbnail is, but at least as you can see all the stuff you see in here, you're on your way to like a really good thumbnail because of course we're in a very big document size or zoomed in pretty much all the time in a bigger spot than what it would be for uh, YouTube. So when you look at it up the top right, you're like, hey, it's a little bit too small. You can make things bigger, change them around, all that good stuff, right? Stop sign, we'll take this, I'll drag this over to make a duplicate. Control T to free transform. Throwing out two stop signs, it kind of helps fill space a little bit. Also puts like a lot of warning kind of flashing lights again. And uh, then we're gonna take our uh, little arrow here I'm gonna take this, we're gonna just make this red because it works and it's the only color that's gonna work for this thumbnail here. I already tried all the other colors, right? Take this, drag it, make it a little more smaller. We have a little bit of motion going on. Right now we make things bigger, smaller, kind of has this weird like protruding kind of uh, forward motion kind of uh, idea, right? You just take this, put this anywhere because it doesn't really matter. As long as the arrow's pointed to something, <laughs> you're good to go. So to kind of finalize this entirely, we're gonna throw on another vibrance. So we're gonna go through our actual adjustments Go to Vibrance, we're gonna take the saturation, throw this up as much as we can without making it look too crazy and kind of weird. I'll say 34 for me is pretty good. I won't really touch the Vibrance itself, I just wanna to touch the saturation. Then I'm gonna uh, use the uh, key stroke shortcut, Control, Alt, Shift, E. If I use that, it'll basically group everything together into one layer very, very quickly for us, right? So everything is now in one simple layer. 
I'll take this, you go to filter, other, high pass, then press OK on 1.3 pixels, press OK, then you change my blend mode from normal to overlay, and that basically does, if I zoom in for a second on the hair, you'll see, if I turn it on and off, it's basically like a very quick and simple sharpen. You'll see this is on, off, on, off. You can see it on the bridge as well. It just makes everything look very, very sharp. So when you, of course, you make it smaller, the sharper it is right there, the better it kind of looks, and we're looking pretty good. So with that being said, to finally save it, it's Control alt shift s or file save or excuse me export save for web and what i like to do of course is png8 is not it we're gonna be using P, uh, jpeg right with the jpeg here you guys will see i have my quality usually on 99 by default but if i look on the bottom right here it says jpeg 2.169 uh, megapixels right so of course youtube only allows 2.0 megapixels to be uploaded through their youtube channel so what you do is you take your quality move it from 99 take your arrow key just go down one and once it goes below 2.1 or 2.0, excuse me, this is 1.96, 97 quality, we're good to go. This is how you save the best quality possible using JPEG, and of course then taking your quality and lower it one by one just until you get below 2.0 megapixels. You press save, you save it, you upload it, you enjoy it, and you get a million views. <laughs> With that being said, guys, I do hope you guys enjoyed today's video here today. Do not forget 275 likes on the video because it's down below, which will be the nice little PSD that you guys have here. So you guys can kind of quick and change and exchange things. Um, I don't know if I said it before, but we hit 120,000 subscribers. That is big. That is freaking awesome. And I want to I wanna get at least like 150 before we actually end the year. Um, but we're at, just at the start, and you guys are killing it and giving me so much support. Um, thank you guys so freaking very much. Uh, I hope you guys do enjoy today's video. Hope you guys enjoy your weekend. I'll tell you guys later. So, so HQ out. Not a case. Do not forget to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love. <laughs>